Our saint of the week is Saint Josephat. Saint Josephat was born John Kunchevich about 1580 in Vladimir, a village of the Lithuanian province in Volnia. His parents belonged to the Eastern Rite Church of Kiev, Ukraine, which was then separated from Rome. When John was just a child, his mother explained the icons in the church. Years later, he told a friend that he felt a spark of fire leave the wound side of the crucified and enter his own heart, which filled him with so much joy. This event influenced the rest of his life. He began to memorize the church rituals and psalms. Within him grew the desire to suffer poverty and death for his savior. John's father sent him to Vilno in Lithuania to learn more about the family business. Nevertheless, he spent much of his leisure in reading the lives of the saints and observing the religious ferments in the local church. The Ruthenians, the ethnic origin of his family, had been evangelized from Constantinople and generally followed the lead of the Byzantine church there. But because of the absorption of the Ruthenians into the Polish kingdom, which is staunch Roman Catholics, the question of reunion with Rome was hotly debated. The bishops of the Ukrainian and Belarusian churches, who lived within the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, held a Ruthenian Synod in 1595 and voted to unite with Rome under Pope Clement VIII. John Konchevich was then 15 years old. In 1598, seven bishops signed the Union of Brest, which allowed them to retain their Eastern rights while in full communion with the Pope. Although most of Vilno refused union, John made his profession of faith, then entered the Basilian Monastery of the Holy Trinity in Vilno and took the name Josaphat. Josaphat was made the superior of a daughter monastery at Baiten, where he revived devotion to the Mother of God at Zervosia. Returning to Vilno as Archimandrite of the monastery, he began to reform the monks. There, he also compiled texts from the Eastern Fathers and Doctors under the title, A Defense of Church Unity. All these activities led to his being appointed coadjutor bishop to the elderly, ailing bishop of Plock. Subsequently, Josaphat became the bishop of Plock. The new appointee at once called a synod to revitalize his diocese. He detached his priests from subservience to the unruly nobility and wrote a rule for priests. Most of all, he pursued the reunion of all with Rome in 1620. Josephus thought about the commencement of a tax that would result in his death as hostilities between supporters and opponents grew more heated. He protested, you people of Vitebsk want to kill me. You set up ambushes for me everywhere, including the streets, bridges, motorways, and shopping centers. You should be aware that I am serving in your midst as a shepherd and would gladly lay down my life for you. While Josephus was visiting Vitebsk, Belarus, he was cruelly hacked to death on November 12, 1623. He was about 45 years old. Josephus had said before his martyrdom, I rejoice to offer my life for my holy Catholic faith. Interestingly, the Orthodox Archbishop Meletius, the saint's former adversary, eventually reconciled with the Catholic Church. In 1867, St. Josephus was canonized by Pope Pius IX. On November 12, 1923, the 10th century of Josephus' martyrdom, Pope Pius IX declared him the heavenly patron of reunion between Orthodox and Catholics. Saint Josephus, pray for us.